Everybody, this is three questions with Dr. Latanya Goffney. Here we go, music, everything. It's like legit. <laughs> okay, I was just talking to Dr. Goffney, and I gotta, I gotta tell you, like I told you this before, but um, I'm actually keynoting a conference in Texas right away, and you said you're so excited. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm very excited. I mean, I was like, Dr. Goffney said, she's like, I, like I've been following your work forever, so like yeah. I've been following you. I feel like kind of stalkerish. I don't know if we <laughs> ever communicate before that. And then the second I'm like, she knows who I am. I DM'd you to be on my podcast, so I'm like so excited you're here today. Listen, it's so weird because I have been a follower for many years, and it just admired your work and a Twitter stalker. And so for you to say <laughs> <laughs> that. The feeling has been mutual. It just means so much. So we, we just we just been kind of like looking at each other, never reaching out to one another, just weirdly. So I, I'm like so pumped because I know you you I know that you have like a, such huge influence not only in Texas but like people just love your work all over. And so I'm I'm really excited to have you in my podcast. We're gonna talk a little bit, you know, in the longer podcast. But uh, I gotta ask you these three questions. I'm I, I can't even wait to hear your answers to be honest. So. <laughs> Um, when you think of like, cause you inspire so many people, but when you think of your educational background, your career, and you think of like teachers who inspired you, like who is someone who inspired you as a teacher and why? And it could be someone, you know, when you're a kid, it could be someone, you know, a colleague. So who's someone you think of right away? Listen, what I do know for sure is education just truly changed the trajectory of my life. And so things were crazy at home, but when I went to school, I had great teachers. And to me, elementary school is so foundational. And so when you uh, think about my the most inspiring teacher, I could say my kindergarten teacher, Ms. Lepley, who, I mean, she was meaner than a junkyard snake, but she was the person <laughs> who told me I was smart. I could talk about my first grade teacher, Ms. Freeman, who was incredible, or my second grade teacher, uh, Ms. Proffer, or my third grade teacher, Ms. Stone. But the one that I, I guess really caused me to look at my life differently and my future opportunities differently was Miss Kathleen Bradford. You see, I was raised in the country, small school, small town. I'm just a country girl. And in this school, we had um, mostly all white teachers. Mm -hmm. And so Miss Bradford was African-American and she looked like me. And so I'll never forget, <laughs> she would wear, you know, you know how your elementary teachers wear the, the, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the dresses, they're plaid and, right. and they have the suspenders. And I promise you, I wanted one of those so badly. <laughs> I wanted to be just like her. And the one thing that she did, and again, I know it doesn't go with any, um, may not excite anyone else, but she gave titty rolls. It yeah. was worth 100 on your spelling test. And I would study all week because I wanted to score 100 and get a Tootsie Roll. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we did math games. And if you did, went around the world and you beat everyone in the class, then you get your name on the board as the, the fastest student for the whole week. And mm -hmm. so Ms. Bradford was professional. She was encouraging. She was engaging. And she made you just want to do better. And for me, being the first uh, African-American teacher that I ever had, it was just, I think it truly uh, started you know, me thinking about being a teacher in the future. Can, can I ask, have you ever like talked to her since then? Like, <laughs> Listen, you know what's the strangest thing? Miss Bradford ended up um, still being at the campus when I became a principal. And so, no. <laughs> yes. So she was still a teacher at Cold Spring Intermediate School when I became the principal. And she was- You were her boss? Is that what you're talking I about? Was, I That's was. That's amazing. And she was amazing. And she was very, um, she would stay late. She was one of those- uh, ones who was very wise. And mm -hmm. I'll never forget because I had always been secondary and I had to go down to intermediate to be a principal, which was grades three, four, and five. And that's hard. It's hard. Trust me. Right. You go from secondary to elementary. And I didn't know like all the fancy terms that you use at elementary schools. And I was telling her one day all the things I didn't know. And she mm -hmm. said, well, we need somebody who is going to make sure we have good discipline and good culture. Yeah. Don't worry about the whole school. We'll worry about the pieces that need to happen in the classroom. So she would wait till everyone had left for the day and she would come visit uh, my office afterwards and just was really encouraging. And so long story short, she knows uh, that I respected her a great deal. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, um, she won't be able to hear this podcast because mm -hmm. um, right during COVID, uh, she died from a complication. Yeah. So uh, Ms. Bradford, her reach, she uh, served nearly 40 years in Cold Spring, Texas as a, as a teacher. So her reach was was far and wide. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, like, 
I, I, I am like, I'm a very emotional person. And when you told me about her guiding you as a principal, that <laughs> almost started making me cry. Like, I'm like, I was like, I was almost yeah. like going out of the cameras because I'm like, I don't want to start that's amazing. It, keeps, it keeps going though. I actually became right. superintendent in Cold Spring. And really? so we continue to provide guidance then as well. That's amazing. Hey, I, I got to I gotta tell you this. So, you know, I grew up in Canada, so teachers didn't wear that. We wore snowsuits. Like, <laughs> I'm like, we didn't wear any of that stuff in Canada. It's free. <laughs> uh, Ka is Kathleen Bradford, correct? Kathleen Bradford. Kathleen Bradford. Just like, that's one of my one of my things I love is just that idea of like how like legacy lives on in you know students and that's just absolutely amazing and so um, it's amazing because you can see her legacy living on in you and when you think about that and so many administrators that you've worked with um, that you've inspired I know we have a very good mutual friend Jill Seiler and so um, when you think of like the like an administrator who inspired you in your career who's someone you think of and why. Actually, I think of Mr. LaFleur, and he was my middle school principal. <laughs> and um, what I remember about um, Mr. LaFleur is he was present and he was visible. I remember he would stand in the hallway and he wore suits and he um, just was always professional, sit in the hallway and would do high fives to all of us as we were uh, walking down the halls. And one time uh, there was an incident and I had gotten into some kind of trouble. I don't even remember what it was, but I ended up in his office and he just expressed his disappointment. And I was like, well, I I said something and I used incorrect English. I think I may have, yeah. uh, I said, I didn't do anything or I didn't do it, Nan or something. He goes, what did you just say? <laughs> and so we went from Nan and there was a term that I heard in my right. mother's house growing right. up. He goes, what does that mean? And we just went on this tangent about the meaning of that word. And he forgot that I was supposed to be in trouble. But seriously, though, I uh, love Miss LaFleur, but also love that he would come to the, the game, uh, the dances. And uh, he would <laughs> dance and he could do the, he and the counselor, you know, you're from Canada, so I don't know if you know, but like the swing dancing. and Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, it, he was just an amazing, um, amazing assistant principal. And so when I got teacher of the year in Texas in 2018, they had a, um, um, they had a little reception for me in Lufkin and he surprised me and I hadn't seen him in 10, 15, 20 years. Wow. So long story short, every now and again, he'll send me a, if he reads about something that I've done, he'll send me the clipping and listen, he was just, amazing. That's amazing. he was amazing. So I got to So I got this is for Mr. Fleur. Get that. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. So I, there's something you said there and I am, I'm, I'm really curious your thoughts on this. I used to get, I used to get teased because I, you know, as a teacher, I like wore like tie every day and they're like, well, you can't connect with kids. I'm like, kids connect with me because I, they know I like them and they know I connect with them. Like I, I want it. And, and I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not one to judge anyone's, mm -hmm. you know, what they're wearing or anything like that. But I wanted to like, you know, be perfect. Like I had no problem sitting in a suit on the floor with kindergarten kids. <laughs> Right. And it wasn't, I don't think like, I think a lot of times people see, you know, dress in different ways. And I'm like, no, if, if the kids can tell if you like them or not, they don't really necessarily matter what you're wearing that day. So I like, I love that because I always, that made me, I, you validated me so much. Cause they're like, why do you dress up? I'm like, I don't know, because I'm, I'm like, that's, I just want to be professional, but the kids know I like them. It's not like, I'm, you know, just boring and stuff like that too. So I, that, that made me feel in this. But I, I, though, seriously though, being yeah. from poverty. Yeah. And um, just poverty that you cannot imagine. Yeah. To go to school. And I, I just, the irony that I just spoke about to uh, people who inspired me, but, and I commented on their dress mm -hmm. because I wanted to be able to dress like that someday. Right. I wanted to be able to look like that someday. And I wanted, sometimes the way you dress communicates how much you care. Yeah. And that was, that was powerful. So I'm, I'm glad that you wore a tie. <laughs> and so. I did. <laughs> I need I needed you, I needed you to back me up with my school though. I used to get teased mercy. I bet you did get teased though. So, by other yeah. teachers, not just us. Yeah. Yeah. I love I'm I, the other thing too, I'm not even gonna get into it. Like how many awards have you won? Like can you throw some money? <laughs> hey, and you know, if you know, um to whom I, I, I take this calling seriously, but I, yeah. I don't even try to get awards. I just love the work. All right. <laughs> I I try and get nothing, so I don't know what's going on. Right. 
Okay. So la last question. So you've had, you've had such an accomplished career. It continues on. And I guarantee you though, if you could go back, there's stuff you'd be like, Oh, why would you do that? Right? Like, and so when you look back at your first year teacher self, um, you know, and you've won like multiple awards for different levels. Right. And I think this is, I think the reason I love telling, I love asking this question is because I think a lot of people will see your career and they just think you got to where you're at. And just like, you just were doing that immediately. And you know, like what, like, what would you, what, what things would you have corrected? Like when you first started, like what advice would you have given to yourself if you could go back in time? I think, um, just giving myself grace, you know, yeah. like literally and enjoying the moments and celebrating the moments. And so while there were many students that I, I reached at times, mm -hmm. I, I would focus on the students that I wasn't able to reach or the lesson that didn't go right and didn't focus uh, enough on the things that did go right and the accomplishments that um, our team, whether it was the language arts team or our eighth grade language arts team that we were able to celebrate. And so I was very, very hard on myself. And I worked long, long, long hours. And so um, in hindsight, if I had it to do all over again, I think I would have taken more time to enjoy the moments and celebrate the successes. There's, so there's this quote from this movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's called My Dog Skip. I always, I've never, I don't know if you've ever seen this movie. <laughs> and it's like a little boy. I, I won't ruin it for you, but I was bawling at the end. It's a little boy and his dog, right? Uh -huh. And he goes away and he says something. And I, you just remind me of it. He said, you know, we spent our whole childhood wishing we could be adults and then spent our entire adult experience wishing we go back to be kids, right? And I, the deadline yeah. so resonated with me. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think t even sometimes when we're, um, you know, I don't know whose term this is, but I've heard it before. Like when we're kind of caught in the suck, like, it's kind of like, we still, like I, you look back and you know, it is important to brace the moments. And it's not, it's not that we don't have those amazing goals right. or right? we can aspire to stuff, but mm -hmm. I think just also be in that moment. Right. And I think, mm -hmm. I think, you know, you're such evidence of this. I think when you have the opportunity to embrace the moment, it actually leads to the future. You know what I mean? But if you're so focused on the future, you're not doing great right now. Right. You're in trouble, right? <laughs> I I love these stories. And I think they would make an amazing <laughs> part of a book in the future. So <laughs> just saying, just throwing that out there. Listen, it's a goal. Jill and I have talked about it. It's certainly yeah. a goal to write a book. So you saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> Maybe you can help me. <laughs> there might be a book in the, in the future coming out. So, hey, Dr. Goffney, I'm so pumped to talk to you even more about such inspiring stories. You do incredible work. And I know, um, I know that the, the, not only the people in Aldine are very blessed to have you, but I know I'm excited. I'm speaking in Texas right away. I know how revered you are there too. So it's been such an honor to talk to you. I can't wait to, to connect. Well, we with can't you. wait for you to come to Texas. We're really I, excited hey, about I might not leave when I come back. <laughs> so, Hey, thanks everyone for listening. Have a wonderful day. Awesome. Mm -hmm.